Hello friends, happy Friday. How are we? I know there's a little bit of delay, so I'll just keep talking until I see um, some people hop in. Okay, the numbers are going up, so now it's working. Hello, hello, happy Friday night. How are you guys? February the 4th. We are in February, so I started early with the bokeh <laughs> last week. So we're gonna have a bonus bokeh, I think, because tonight I'm gonna do a card with this really, really fun technique. And then I think I'm going to level it up and do a layout for the extra Friday at the end of this month. So hello, friends. Hi, Laura. Hello, Ellen and Sandy and Maria. Hello, Kari, how are you feeling? Deb, Donna, Nancy, Irene. Oh, so many friends here. Hi, Jessica, how are you, married lady? Hi, Jess Foster, how are you? Catherine, I haven't seen you in a while. So happy to see you. I feel like we should have lots of friends here tonight prepping for a very jam-packed weekend with our Fernwood event is happening this weekend. And there are a lot of you. So I feel like it's like the pregame, right? I don't know. I have to plan a halftime show like um, what's going to be happening for Super Bowl, right? Snoop Dogg. I'm so excited. Hi, Angie. So many friends are here. So happy to see you. Good evening. Can't wait for tomorrow. Me either. That's why I thought tonight will be very fun but won't take me a long time because then I have to clean up and set up for tomorrow and go to bed early so I'm well rested. So very excited. Um, Gina Livy's going well. I'm doing well. It was a good day. I had spaghetti squash tonight that I roasted and then I had, I just pan fried some ground pork with a little bit of vodka sauce and onions and I just had that like spaghetti. <laughs> it's like spaghetti, spaghetti, right? Yeah, Dr. Dre, uh, or uh, yes, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, it's, it's going to be, it's going to go down in here. I'm going to be like, I'm totally cutting a rug. My kids are going to be like, mom, go sit down, you weirdo. So uh, yes, and Karen, I am embracing my rainbows. I decided for the month of February, I am wearing some type of rainbow clothing every single day because I do own enough of it to go the entire month without wearing the same thing. So this is the sweater for today. I got stuff ready for tomorrow and Sunday. And even like down to the casual, I could probably do jammies in rainbow too. So, right, whatever um, will lighten your mood and just make you a little happier. Winter is hard. January is freaking hard. I don't know if anybody else felt like that. And then we got dumped on with tons of snow. It is very wintry outside. It snowed again. Uh, overnight last night and there's tons of snow out there so it's crazy hello Robin I haven't seen you for a while hi Julie how are you I saw Jamie is here too hello very talented friend so happy to see so many of you so tonight this is what's going down my friends and it's going to be super fun so I am going to do this in card size tonight but I will do a repeat the last weekend, going to mix a whole bunch of bokeh techniques on a layout. So that will happen on the last Friday of this month. But for tonight, we'll just kind of be a warm up towards this. So I love it. Looking forward to the weekend. Me too, Robin. Me too with my Robins. It'll be so much fun. Um, other little tidbits of info. I stocked some things on vickybooten.com. So there is, I left the Vicky Booten mixed media sale up, but I have stocked it all and I even dropped the price of the glazes, the gold glazes stocked. I put a bunch of stencils up there. I restocked Fernwood items. So if you want to take a peek at vickybooten.com, there's lots of stuff stocked. I also sent out a newsletter because the Sweet Rush uh, pre-order is going to go up next week as well. So I have a whole bunch of stuff to stock, uh, Ranger stuff, a whole bunch of stencils that I need to put up, but I ran out of time today. I got as much up there as I could. I tried to clean the store up a little bit. So all the stuff that sold out, I tried to take off there, but it's a huge job in one Vicky. And, um, Rose, 
the rose gold glaze is a thing long ago of the past. If you find it randomly somewhere online, I have three bottles left that that's all I own. So um, there's no rose gold glaze. I do not have access to the, uh, the um, turquoise one, which was prism glaze, but you can get it on uh, americancrafts.com on their um, site because it's not through American Crafts. It's through like a partner company. So I don't have it. So I can't, uh, whatever I could find, but you're going to see, I'm going to restock some of my older collections because I'm cleaning everything out for the new year. So just keep watching. I'm going to be restocking. So it's one of the things that I'll be working on. What is Sweet Rush? It's my new collection. It has not, um, it is not in stock just yet, but it will be. And like this weekend, I'm doing the Fernwood Lollapalooza event weekend where I go and I make an album. We're doing uh, 10 layouts and a bonus card class. So the, it, not everything will happen this weekend, but it's all going to happen as part of the event. So the next one will be with Sweet Rush, which kind of looks like this. It's very fun, right? It's very bright and colorful. It's going to be so much fun. So um, I will be putting that up on vickybooten.com at the end of this week. If you aren't signed up for my newsletter, make sure you get on there because I will post that it's going up. Just to give you an idea of what the papers look like with this collection. It's so much fun, right? This is Sweet Brush. Um, I'm not prepared for this. I wasn't prepared to answer that question. So that's what Sweet Rush looks like. It comes with an album. I'm rolling out my um, cart because it is my project cart. I posted today on uh, We Are Memory Keepers that it is like the best thing ever, the project cart. So this is the album and it is a three inch wide album. So it's gonna be on like Donkey Kong with this class. We are going to really have fun with this one. It comes with pocket pages and art full binder pages inside of it. So it's all going to be included in the weekend event. So um, just remember when you go to order, there are um, add-ons, Sweet Rush add-ons, but it's all a pre-order. So when you put your order in, the only thing that can go in the order is Sweet Rush. If you add anything else on, it's too hard for me to keep track of because it's a pre-order. This isn't going to ship until the end of April, early May. So if you go and put a whole bunch of stuff in there, one, it won't fit in the box. This kit is going to be huge in the box. And... Um, you it's too hard for me to keep track of so that is the biggest thing when you go to register or sign up for the sweet rush pre-order so you get everything you need to participate in the weekend event there are also add-ons like washi tape and the card set and the tag book that aren't included in the kit that will be available you can order any of those things one kit per box because I can't fit two in a box. And then that means the box is too big and I have to contact you because the shipping is extra. So one kit per box, you can add the add-ons, but please don't add like Vicky Boot and stuff or other stencils or anything that isn't part of the pre-order. Because um, when it all is here and I start to kit it and we ship it, it's good if it's as easy as possible. So I don't mess anything up because it can happen. It's just one Vicky, right? When is the weekend? You know, Kathleen, it's going to be this summer. I have not booked it because as we know in times past, I, ooh, what happened here? Can you guys see me? Sorry. I hope that doesn't happen all night, but I just lost the connection for a second. Uh, it's a six by eight album, but it's a three inch binder ring, which is bigger than they normally are. Um, I haven't booked a weekend yet, because I don't know exactly when the product will all arrive. With it being a pre-order, I say expected to the arrive the end of April, but I never have a clue. And only you guys that have been around for a while, you know. So many things with um, product arriving and delays that there can be issues. So I don't book 
the class until I have a clear idea of when everything's going to arrive. So uh, just to let you know, I haven't picked anything, but I am thinking it is going to probably be July. I think the class will be in July. So, and don't forget if you're on vacation or there's any reason you can't do it in the summer, it's all recorded so you can do it at your leisure. So hello, scrapbook.com. Hello, Ar how are you? Question, what stencil and stamp set will be? Will you be using in the Sweet Rush kit? It is the uh, included when I post it. I put exactly the name. I don't remember right now. Um, but it is included when uh, it's posted. I, I put in there exactly what's in the kit, except for listing which papers, okay? Question, have you booked a class date for gel plate two? I have not, Karen. I'm still wrapping up another collection, plus uh, with Fernwood weekend this weekend, uh, crazy time, but it's on my list. I have it actually written on my list. So I wanna get the pre-order done for Sweet Rush and get that weekend kind of planned out. And then the next thing that I will be talking about is gel plate two, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I have orders going in so that there'll be some new stencils and stuff for that. So it's coming, it's coming. Hello, any other questions did I miss? Uh, did you see scrapbook.com had some good deals this week on uh, their foam uh, blending tool, the domed foam blending tool and a whole bunch of stuff. Really, really awesome. Um, let's see. When is the weekend? Don't know yet. I read that already. Made myself strawberry blonde today to break myself up. I love that, Hetty. Um, each collection gets better. Wait, Kari, wait till you see the next ones that we've been working on. Like today, as we're finishing up, um, we finished up the six by eight paper pad for uh, one of the upcoming collections. And we were like, this is fun. This is a good one. I think it's, you guys are gonna love it. So it's good. Uh, with the Sweet Rush, and I don't know, I don't have my stencils right here. So I can't tell you right off, but I have, I'll have both of them in the store. So if you want to add one, to your order you can do that uh what am i planning for valentine's day i don't know something with hearts i have like for all the rainbow sweaters i have i have a really awesome collection of heart sweaters like i buy a lot of valentine sweaters so um for sure we're doing something on valentine's day just so i can wear my sweaters and i might even have a costume change midway through that live because that will be crazy um so I think, question, any idea about the, the cost of Sweet Rush will be the same. I think I put it up by $5. It's only up by 5 So uh, that is still, when you see all of the product in there, because I put even more stuff in this one, um, you will see the value. The value is there. Okay. So I did not put it up by much. I only went up by 5 Um Okay, I think that's it. Let's just do some things. You ready? Did I miss anything? Question. Um, just so we prepare, when are the collections coming out? April. So the end of April, there's one in the summer. But it's not, I can't say any of the things. And then a fall. <laughs> okay, but you kind of already know what's going on. But I can't say any of the things. Just don't say the things. Okay. Okay. So it's good. What time do we start tomorrow? 10 a.m. Eastern time. And eat your Wheaties, get your drinks ready, um, get snacks. Some people say compression socks because you're sitting for a long time. We will go hard tomorrow, but it is freaking awesome. Like, I can't wait. I cannot wait to share the Fernwood event weekend with you guys. Like, it's going to be so good. Okay, so 10 a.m. Eastern time. Ah! Anything else? Paper clips. So many paper clips. Like when I say a box of paper clips, you need them. Okay. So I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to get started. I don't know if I missed anything, but say it again. Um, would distress crayons work tonight? They will, Jordan. But oh, here's the other thing as you're saying this. So, my friends, art crayons, what is left is what is left. They are going to be discontinued. So I posted, um, like I ordered the last of the cool art crayons. They are all gone. Can't get any more from American Crafts. I literally emptied out what they have left. So you will see that I posted them um, on the Vicki Booten uh, art supply sale. Because for me, I now it's just, let's 
I clear it out. If, if um, they're not going to be around anymore, I want to make sure I get them in your hands. So you will see. The question was, will distress crayons work? Tim's distress crayons. They will. Are they the same? No. There are multiple water-soluble art crayon sticks. They're all different. Okay. Gelatos are not the same as art crayons. Art crayons aren't the same as distress crayons. Scribble sticks are totally different as well. So the thing with the art crayons is they are heavily pigmented. You get a lot of color out of them, but they will always remain open. It doesn't mean you touch them and they're going to rub all over everything. The more diluted they are, then the more uh, less transfer there will be. The art with uh, distress crayons, they will set because that's the magic of a distress crayon that you can use it on metal and you can use it on different items and it will set. So if I use an art uh, distress crayon, I could then rub over it with distress ink. So that's what makes that product really magical for how you use it. Art crayons will perform differently and you're going to see why they'll be magic tonight. Like something I discovered because that's why we always have to practice and play and just have fun with art is because the discovery that we make through the process of just playing is mind blowing. That's why this technique probably hands down one of my favorites. So um, am I missing stuff? Like I said, all of them are different. I own all water soluble art crayons. I have neo colors. I have scribble sticks. I have distressed art crayons. I have art my art crayons because my name is on it. But obviously, this is the Vicky Booten Facebook <laughs> Live. It's uh, prop or Friday Night Live. It's probably a good idea. I show you how to use my product right so for sure uh we're gonna use these tonight use whatever you have see what results you get you know like i always say i'm totally fine with use what you have but if you want the art crayons because it's an awesome product you're going to want to start gathering them now and the plus with them they won't dry out right so if you have them and you add them to your stash you don't have to worry that you have to use them right away um i love the art crayons it's just totally different product and I can't convince you of that until you try them and use them and see how they're going. And here's, I'm going to whisper something. The stencil brushes are sold out. They're gone. I added 12 of them to vickybooten.com. So I took out of my stash and I'm trying to get some new stencil brushes. But at this point, I'm going to use it tonight. I'm just telling you now. I added a few and the gold glaze that you guys have been waiting for all to vickybooten.com. But uh, what I have is what I have. There, there are none left, okay? So let's flip. They're all different. You have scribble sticks, but have not used them. Love your art crayons. I have them all. Even though I have ones with my name on it, I own all distress crayons from Tim Holtz because I use them for different things. I have scribble sticks. They're much harder. I love them for art journaling. Um, I have neo colors. I have gelatos. I own all of them because they all do different things. It's the same with acrylic paint, not like just because it's acrylic paint doesn't mean it's the same. Just because it's watercolor doesn't mean it's the same. Just because it's cardstock doesn't mean it's all the same across the board. It's the same with art mediums, okay? All right, flipping the camera, you ready? Okay, here we go. I almost hung up on you guys, so Vicky. Vicky's got to get her act together. It's going to be a very long weekend. So that's why I thought tonight will be short and sweet and lots of fun. So look at what I've done too. Friends, uh, do you remember when we did this earlier this year? And I had an extra sheet, so I made a card out of it. So I still have one page for my art journal, but I actually made a card out of the one I had prepped just to show you guys what we were doing. So I'm very proud of myself that I have another card in my card collection for this year. So this is again using the um, stamp set from Fernwood, the floral one. And then look it, I layered some die cuts. This is Gina K smile die. So I'm very proud of my card making skills. And if you've hung out with me for a while, you'll know. Like, I am now a total convert. I love the cards. Uh, what is the question here? Question. If you are just jumping into mediums, what would you start with? Um, 
my mediums were created for beginner artists, artists, artists. It's going to be one of those night artists. That's what we call them here. Beginner, beginner artists. Um, so if you looked at like the art crayons, I love because you can use them dry and you can use them wet. The stencil brush is a definite because it's a great medium um, to apply them dry. And I would do iridescent glaze, a gesso and a gel medium. I think that's a great place to start and distress inks. Like if you were my friend and we were going shopping and you had to pick something, those are the things that I would get you to get you started with mixed media and foundations paper. Literally foundations paper is the best investment you can make in your mixed media endeavors because the paper is heavy. Everything I do is on foundations paper, right? Everything I do is on foundations paper and stencils. Yes, stencils and stamps because you don't have to be uh, a Picasso to create beautiful art if you have stencils and stamps. So yes, Cindy, thank you. Stencils and stamps. Like stencils, I will buy all of them. There are a whole bunch of new exclusive ones coming out from scrapbook.com. And I was talking with them today. I actually put an order in at scrapbook.com for some new dies. So um, I'm going to be showing you all of the things. But just stick around and you're going to see and keep asking me questions. Because you know I will answer 100% honestly. It's very overwhelming to figure out what to start with. But um, I love the art crayons. I love them, love them, love them. If the, the factory that we buy them from would let me make new colors, we would be adding to them, but they will not expand their color palette. So unless I can find something that's similar where we can grow it, it is what it is. And I'm just going to have to, we'll keep using them for a while and then I'll find a new medium to use. But you know, I'll always use my distress inks as well. But yeah, um, I'm not going to fight for the art crayons anymore. I just feel like they probably, the market, I don't think unless I grow my whole following by like a hundred thousand, I think the art crayons now will move on to something new. Right? So for tonight, we are going to make a background with color. Why I like the art crayons is I'm using them completely dry tonight. And do you see it gives this kind of brushed effect in the background? So they blend beautifully. This will be very quick technique other than um, letting the paint dry and then i'm going to show you something after what would you suggest as an alternative to art crayons today you could use distress ink you could use distress ink and probably if i wasn't going to use art crayons tonight i would use distress ink right i would use distress ink um but you want to make sure you don't really make sure you don't get any water on it okay so you will need whatever your base is going to be. My card is going to be an A2 size. So I just made a smaller mat that I can mat on my card. I have circles punched out. I'm actually using the exact same ones that we did from uh, last week to do the bokeh. I have my art crayons. I have one stencil brush that'll just clean as I go. So you could use distress ink or oxide and an ink blending tool. Okay. And then the other thing I have, you could use an ink blending tool, but I'm going to use just, it, this is a, a Nuvo little um, ink blender, a foam blender, but you could use any blending tool. Okay. This is how I'm going to apply the white paint because um, I think the sponge will make it nice and smooth, right? Um, I wouldn't gesso it, Ruby, to start with. Let's see what you get. What what medium are you using? Are you using art crayons? Are you using distress ink? Don't gesso it. Let just see with your paper what you get. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Um, yes, just message me, okay, Kathy? Because I I will not remember this from tonight. Emails. Here's the other thing, my friends. If you're trying to contact me, really best to email me. If you leave me a message on uh, Facebook or um, in Messenger, I won't see them, right? So uh, I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. Like I just went on some random um, 
inbox on my Facebook and there were like a ton of messages and I went, I'm not going to even open these because now it's just too late to answer them. So definitely email me and that is where um, I'm happy to help you. But tonight, I this is a very crazy busy week weekend for me. I will be teaching for, I don't know how many hours, like probably 12, more than that this weekend, 12 hours. So my brain is just, it's only on about 5% right now, right? Hi, Sarah, how are you? You just bought some stencil brushes, been looking for them forever. I am working on uh, trying to get uh, this stencil brush as a single. So I'm working on that. But if we do, it won't come out until the fall. So I am attempting to get this stencil brush back as a single because I feel like I don't care what mediums you use. This is magic. You want a stencil brush. And this one, the bristles are nice and firm. So I find all of the ones I've used, and I don't even care that my name's on it. I'm just saying it's a good stencil brush. So I will be, I'm working on getting this brought back out, but I think as a single, um, it'll get the price point down and I hardly ever use the little one anyway. Um, I don't like it as much as this one, okay? And then a good white paint. So I'm using Liquitex. I love my Liquitex paints. So you need a good white paint. And we're going to get started now. Craft mat. I'm going to get, because this craft mat is really just to protect my desk. But it's one of the sticky ones. I much prefer these craft mats. So let me show you. I have multiples. So I have my Ranger craft mat. I have this lovely one from scrapbook.com. And this is the one I carry on my site that I love as well. It is the um, American Crafts one. So I'm just going to grab a craft mat just because cleanup is so much easier. Okay. Hi, Lizette. Hola, amiga. How are you? Como esta? that is the extent of my Spanish. Wasn't that pretty impressive? Oh my goodness, right? Regards from Puerto Rico. I will be there soon. I have decided. I told Nilmi I'm coming to see you guys. I miss Puerto Rico and I will be booking that trip soon. So just be prepared. I will be in town. Okay, everything. You guys can see what I'm doing. Hi, Crystal. Sorry, just got here. Can we use the stress ink? Sure. Sure you can. Sure you can. I'm going to show you my art crayons tonight because that will give you guys the opportunity. It's one of those things like I will have um, 12 boxes of those on the go until they are gone forever. Like, how am I going to not use them anymore? I don't even know how that's going to work because it is one of my favorite mixed media mediums. But uh, we'll do what we can, right? So the surface I'm working on is pretty small. So I don't know if I'm going to do the full rainbow, but we'll see as we go. I'll just do work in smaller sections. But like I said, I will repeat this technique on um, a bigger surface for a layout at the end of the month. Okay. Question, what size is your paper tonight? Well, my card, Irene, is a... Um, a2, so four and a quarter by five and a half. So the little piece that I'm using is a four by five and a quarter. Okay. So I have my stencil brush. I am going to add my art crayons just on a sheet of plastic, or you could add them on your craft mat. So I'm just going to go in with the yellow to start. And do you see tons of pigment? I am hardly touching or rubbing that crayon and look how much color I get. So there is a plus with these, right? You get a lot, a lot of pigment in there. I'm going to load my dry stencil brush with the yellow art crayon. So just by working in a circular motion, I'll pick all that medium up. And now I can, in a circular motion, just start to deposit it on my foundations paper. So I am using foundations paper. Do you see 
how easy that is. So you guys will know when you are using different pastels, what application and, and how they're working, right? I can't, unless you're using them, you wouldn't know what the difference is, right? So use whatever you have, see what results you get, right? So I went in with the yellow and because I'm working in a smaller uh, surface, that's all I'm going to use with the yellow. I am going to take my stencil brush and this is a damp paper towel and just to switch to another color. I don't have to clean, clean this perfectly, but I'm just wiping it off on this damp paper towel. So I can go in here now, just dry it a bit and I'm gonna pick up some orange. You'll see that the colors I'm working with are um, next to each other on the uh, color wheel. So if I go in with orange right now, but I still have a little bit of yellow on here, it's not going to muddy up my color, okay? So I orange is much darker than the yellow. I won't need much. So again, in a circular motion, I'm just going to load that orange on here and I'm going to deposit a little bit of orange on my card. You know what I'm gonna do as well? I'm gonna put some more yellow back on here because I was just thinking. I was just thinking as I was going, I want the yellow to come down further so when it meets with the blue, I will make a nice green. So I just took the orange off because orange and green will not make a nice color. It will make mud. Because remember, you don't want all three primary colors in your color blend or you will make mud. That is your color tip. If red, yellow, and red, yellow, and blue are all in the color combination in some order, then you will make brown. So if I put orange and blue together, orange is red and yellow. So red, yellow, and blue will make mud. I yellow and blue will make green. So just, you might have to think about that for a minute, but that's the only thing I want you to keep in mind so you don't make mud, okay? I am going in a kind of rainbow effect tonight, but uh, you can do whatever you want. If you only have like two colors to use, just use your two colors. It's totally okay. You do not have to use the same color palette I am. Do whatever makes you happy. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more yellow and I can soften out my orange a little bit too. Wipe that on my wet paper towel. And I'm going to go in with a pink now. Scribble sticks, no bueno. Is it because they're too hard, Pam? Because, right, it's not that they're awesome, but for different techniques right? You know that I would invite all my friends to the party, but uh, the sound's off. Can you guys hear me? Is it only Jill whose sound is off? Can anybody else hear me? Just one of you, right? Oh, so you can hear me, right? Yep. Sorry, Jill. It's just you. Maybe you pressed your mute. So I'm going to go in here with the pink. Oh, look at that picked up beautifully as well. And then I'm just going to work that pink in here. There is a little bit of yellow still on my brush. So what I will do is clean it up a little bit. And then I'll go in and load it again with the pink. So you want to make sure you deposit a fair bit of color down, okay? So you can totally go in and reapply to deepen up your pigment. So you'll see with the stencil brush too, um, it really makes this pretty soft pigment, okay? You can also, if you want, squirt a little bit of water on the end and that will um, make the cleaning a little bit faster, okay? How we doing, friends? So what are you using out there? If you're playing along and you don't have art crayons, 
how is your distress ink working? What kind of results are you getting? I'm going to go in with a little bit more orange again. Soften that out. Love it. And now for sure cleaning the orange out because um, I don't want the orange with any other pigment. And then I'm going to come in with some blue, which then will help me make a little green and a little bit of purple. A blending brush with what, Yvette? What is a white crayon? Is It's an art crayon. Uh, I want to know what you are going to use your blending brush with. Yeah, with the um, blending brush with your distress or with your ink will work beautifully as well. Distress ink is working. Uh, your watercolor creams are not the best. This is the first time I've been able. I lost to play live in so long. I'm having so much fun. I missed you, Vicki. I missed you too. Like I seriously notice when all you guys aren't here and um, how you doing, Simone? Um, it's very nice when you guys can make it and it's very nice when you can play along, right? So to make sure I don't have mud on my palette now, I'm gonna wipe that art crayon off. They wipe beautifully. The other thing that's really magical with the art crayons is they clean up. So if you get it on your hands and stuff, it'll wipe right off. Did you guys notice I painted my nails for you? Isn't that crazy? That is not who I normally am at all, right? You are not usually getting um, painted nail, Vicky, because I'm always in these mediums that my hands always look junky. But I did. I was like, I, for relaxing time, am going to paint my nails. Um, I'm going to go in here now with the blue. Right, the blue right here is just going to be with the pink and the yellow. So I will start in the corner to give it that turquoisey color. But then I can blend it up into, I'm not going to go over into the pink too much, okay? I will go up into the yellow, but I'm not going to go in the pink too much because this has a little bit of a turquoise to it. So I'm going to go in with a different shade of blue. I'm not going to clean my brush. But I'm going to go in with the navy-ish blue, this one, okay? Because it is um, a little bit darker. Maybe throw a little bit of the dark, dark blue in there too, okay? And I'll load my brush up. I'm going to start in this corner. And up into the pink a little bit. It starts to make a nice purple. So the blend is very nice. Um, I find that you really can't mess it up with the stencil brush and the art crayons. So I think it's great for a beginner or intermediate or advanced. So it's kind of a plus, right? Is that um, you can't mess this up. So I'm gonna also go in with a little bit of green in that section. I'll just clean my brush off a little bit. Question, I bought all of your sets of art crayons, but I do not have white. It's in the neutral set. If you have all the sets, the white is in the neutral set. There's white, there's black, there's some browns. There's one of my favorite shades of green and blue in that set. And it works beautifully on dark cardstock or darker colors. Okay, let's clean that up a little bit. Let's go in with a really bright green. Load that up a little bit and just brighten that up a little bit right here. So what do we think? The only thing I might do is come back in with some yellow in here now. I just wanna brighten that yellow up a bit and maybe a little bit more pink. 
that's my thought there. What do you think? Maybe a little bit more of the turquoise in this corner too. And then we can go on to the paint. There are three sets of art crayons. A warm set, a cool set, and a neutral set. And they are all currently on sale on vickybooten.com. And all my pricing is Canadian dollars too. So if you're looking that and going, what is, what the what? It's all in Canadian, okay? And if your box is smaller and the shipping is less, because it's all based on a um, 13 by 13 by 4 box, but if you order, say, three sets of art crayons, um, I do adjust the shipping when I ship it out. I just have to put one box size in for my shipping, so it does affect. But you probably can still find them at um, your favorite local scrapbook store or uh, online. If you're like, I have your, you have your favorite stores to order from, you totally can do that. I love it. And now that pink, it's so pretty, right? This is um, my stencil brush. I was saying it is a discontinued item, but I am fighting to get it back. So, um, but I think I'll, in the package, we'll just put one brush in. Quit, Vicky. What are the main differences between a regular blending brush and a stencil brush you are using? I think the bristles, right? The bristles. Um, I don't know this. So how this came to fruition, how I ended up with this in my collection is they had a whole box of samples they had got from suppliers and we had the art crayons were already going to be a thing. And I used a stencil brush and I had never used it with mediums, a stencil brush before. And this was before the blending brushes came out. This, there were other stencil brushes out before blending brushes or stencil brushes, but a lot of them had that kind of pointed tip on it, which I find is impossible to control. Ink, you need a flat edge. But why I love this is, do you see, like it takes a lot of pressure to bend those bristles. So I find it's a nice flat surface for applying um, inks, paints. So I love this thing, right? And you won't know until you know. Like a lot of you guys out there who bought this and um, have used this will love it. Blending brush, you could totally use an ink blending tool. I'm just using this because like obviously, look how many of them I have around here. <laughs> Favorite tools. I love domed foam applicator. That's what I was just saying. Cause scrapbook.com um, has like a deal on if it's still on, it was only for a couple of days for um, all their blending tools. The other thing that I'm going to use tonight is this, but the other thing that I love are like the little finger finger ink blenders. Just know this now. Um, it's something you'll want to have for one of the next bokas. I think the next week, Boca, you want one of the little finger blenders. If I have one handy, handy, I will show you. Like there's these, but then there's the little smaller ones. But we're going to be using this next week with um, art crayons or distress ink, gesso, stencils. So um, definitely want to get that. Okay, friends, make sure that you grab one of those. You will want that for next week. We'll talk about that, but let's finish this week's project. Am I answering all the questions? Your stencil brushes are fa fantastic. I use them all the time. Thank you, Dion. Ink, finger ink dauber. Yes, you need that for next week. You need a finger ink dauber. So now I'm going to go back in there with that pink because I just want to brighten that up in this section a little bit. Purple it up a bit in that corner. Okay, that makes me happy. I feel like there's lots of color. Depositive. Deposited and now comes the fun part. Let's boca. Not polka. Boca. Let's boca. So I may attach this just because the surface is so small, so it doesn't move when I'm working. 
So look at dry to the touch, even though if I wet this, I could move these mediums around because the magic with art crayon, it looks and feels like an oil pastel, but it is completely, completely water soluble. So why I love these is that it's a stable medium that I can use dry like we just did and it builds tons of pigment. But I also could go on here right now. I could put this down. I could wet it and I can make watercolor. But look how much pigment is in that. So it's they're magical. I think um, if you're going to a crop or traveling to do crafts, uh, the price point is reasonable and you can do multiple, multiple things with it. So that is before they're gone, I would say stock up. If you have a set that you're using, stock up. Um, and just know the cool ones are definitely all sold out um, at American Crafts. So if there's a store that when I'm loving what Vicky's doing tonight, I'm going to get some of those art crayons you won't be able to order the cool ones. I bought the last pack. Hey, Vicki, my very first time here. Love it. I might get hooked. I hope so. I hope you enjoy this. We make art every Friday night, right? It is a great community just to connect. And then um, we make friends here and then we make art. So I either do scrapbook pages, art journal, you could do this on a canvas. You could do it for cards. So now I'm going to take, like I said, I like my Liquitex. I think it's a very reasonably priced um, paint, acrylic paint, and the coverage is really good. So this is one of those things that you totally can um, buy at Michael's or Joann's or your favorite local art store. So it's readily available. And I absolutely love this stuff. So I have it in every color, every single color, some multiple. I am going to take this and I'm going to put it. I just have a little sheet of plastic here. So I don't know. I got this out of packaging or cut it. But this is a palette that I use, right? So I am going to use this with this little dauber. You could use it with a uh, makeup sponge. But I find that um, this is a great way to apply it. You don't want the stencil brush or a bl I don't even know if I'd use a blending brush with acrylic because you're going to get the brush marks in it and the paint will start to set up and it will look textured. So you want the smoothest way to ap uh, apply the acrylic. Okay. I am going to see if I can just use this without um, tacking it down just so I don't lift any of the color off and we are going to start now creating a bokeh effect so I'm going to go in with the acrylic some I'm going to layer multiple times some I'm going to layer once with very little paint I don't know if I'm going to use the two inch circle on this because on my card I might put one or two, but it might be too big. So that will be the last one I'm going to apply. Can you use white pigment over um, art crayon? What kind of white, white pigment ink? Test it. Do a little separate one and test it and see. We're going to do, like for tonight, I love because last week we did bokeh with adding color. And I love because I go on there and everybody is like 10 steps ahead of me doing things that I've planned for this month. And I'm like, that's awesome. I'm going to do that again. That's why I did it. Just, I said, do it monochromatic um, this first time. But then everybody was having so much fun. They did hearts, they did stars, and I love it. So for tonight, I'm using acrylic paint. But I have plans to use um, white ink, um, glitter ink, uh, different mediums. So you can go ahead and try anything that you have, right? Anything that you have and see how it works. But I would test it before you put it on your permanent background. Okay, helpful hint. I always losing my acetate sheet. So I put a piece of washi on the top. So that's awesome, Karen. So Karen's saying, because it's clear, it's really easy to kind of mix it up with your stuff. So by putting a piece of washi on it, she can always find it. It's like putting um, red underwear on the invisible man. He can't hide from you and neither can your sheet of uh, acrylic, right? 
So I am going to start with this circle, I think is one and a half or one and three quarters. Just make sure you have a couple different sizes. I used a circle punch to create these, okay? It's one and a half. I just use a circle punch. You can use um, dies, whatever you have. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can delete that. Go away, rude person. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go in maybe right here to start. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold it down. I'm going to pull my paint out because I don't want to put it right in a big blob of wet paint. And then I'm just trying to evenly load up my little foam blender. You want to start with less paint and you can always go in and add more. So for the first one, just kind of deposit it. You don't want to work it around a lot because you're going to end up picking up the pigment because it is water soluble. So by getting that first layer on and letting it dry, it will create kind of a mask for the color underneath. And look at what you get, right? Very fun. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. The one thing you're going to have to watch for is um, that the paint's dry before you lay your mask on it because you don't want to glue the cardstock down to wet paint. So I'll probably do a few of these, then heat set them, and then do a few more. Hi, Lori, how are you? So I'm gonna go down maybe in this corner. I'm gonna go right in the corner and I'm gonna do another one. Again, just going to load up. If you find that your um, blending tool has picked up a lot of color, maybe wipe it off before you load it so you aren't pulling pink into your blue, okay? And then I'm gonna go in there again and I will tap to deposit color and then I can blend it because I want it to be pretty smooth. Okay, make sure you get right up to the edges and you can blend it. And like I said, I can come back here, mask them again and add um, more pigment if I need to or more white. But you will notice with acrylic paint, when it starts setting up, you wanna leave it alone. If you keep messing with it, what you're gonna end up doing is um, it almost adheres the foam to your page, right? So deposit a little, let it dry, and then go and add some more. I love this technique. Do you see why this is gonna end up being a layout as well? Because I wanna be able to work on a way huge section of this. Like you could do a piece of art in your home with this, but wait, just wait what will be coming. I cannot wait to share something magical that's gonna happen that I discovered. Hi, Valerie, how are you? Sorry, just getting on now. You're in New Jersey. Say hello to your family for me. So I'm gonna go in now with a smaller circle. We're just gonna keep doing this. We're gonna layer, we're gonna overlap some of them. So maybe let's put this one here pick up some paint. You see, I'm just pulling it in. I don't want a lot of acrylic. Less is more with acrylic. You can always come in and add more, but you don't want to start too heavy. It will bleed under your stencil and you don't want that. Just a big hot mess. So I'm tapping it and then blending it so I get nice sharp edges. Pull it from the outside in. Don't push it under your stencil. So pull it from the outside in, outside in and then tap and let's see, nice clean circle. Friends, right? So much fun. Um, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna be brave. Do you like my fake mask? Because this um, punch cuts so close to the edge, it's almost impossible to not put a straight edge on my page. So look what I did. I made a Jimmy rigged, I Jimmy rigged it. So um, I'm going to add, it's so big, I don't want to cover all my pigment. So let's, I'm going to overlap right here, okay? A very light circle. So I'm going to go in, right? Tap to deposit some pigment, and then you can kind of rub it around. I don't want this one to be a dark circle. I want it to be very light, so it's just like a halo. So come in and pull from the edges so that you have a nice sharp circle so you're not pushing it underneath 
and then just lightly rub some pigment on here or some paint. Okay. And you can always test and see. <gasps> Love it. Love it. Okay. But I don't want a lot of big ones because look at that just took a lot of color away. Right. So I'm going to stay with smaller. I'm going to go in with this one. You can even, if you're finding it's a little dry, I'm going to give that a little mist. I don't want it wet, wet, but it was um, drying a, a little sticky. Okay, pounce, pull. There we go. Pull it in from the edges. Don't work it too much and move on to the next one. I'm not going to overlap till that dries a bit though, okay? I'll build something down in here first. Okay, pull in from the edges. Make sure your paper doesn't, your mask doesn't move. Okay. Oop, see? Careful. I wasn't holding the paper and the mask. So make sure you're holding both. from the mask in so you're not pushing your paint underneath but you still want to get a nice sharp edge okay hi Stephanie how are you um, you know you can uh, shop and watch you can shop and watch me I love it are you going to be with me all weekend Kim do you have other stuff going on or will you actually get to play because I am doing a whole online event this weekend featuring my Fernwood collection. And it is going to be so much fun. We are going to have such a good time. So like I said, to start, I'm going very light, just kind of building the pattern. Some of my circles start to look a little weird. So I just move my uh, stencil around and try to um, get a sharper edge. Okay. And like I said, we can go in and um, heat set this if we have to. If your paint isn't setting, I'm going to go down here and make this one a little darker now because I think the paint will be dry. You've got your rum ready for your clip, flip, and sip. Kim started that clip, flip, and sip. So when we're building our album... And she's putting her pages together. She clip flips and sips her rum. I love it. Okay. Let's go in with this. I'm going to totally overlap that. Make sure you're holding it down. Very nice. How is everybody doing out there? How is um, your paint working on your Distress Ink or whatever crayons you used? Are you using something other than acrylic paint? Just tell me how, uh, what results are you getting? Is it working? Are you happy with what you're getting? Because I love this if you have um, used what you have on hand and it's not the same as mine. I would like to know what kind of results that you're getting. Have you found that it's a good solution? I'm just softening the edge with my finger a little bit because there was a little bit of a hard line of paint. Okay. And I did not like that, but a lot of times to fix too. I'm like, oh, I don't like that too much. So let's just lay another circle on top. And nobody will know that Vicki pushed the paint underneath her stencil. Acrylic paint is uh, can be a little tricky to to use, right? Now remember what we talked about too. Don't go too crazy, crazy. 
just kind of step away, look at what you're creating, see if you like the effect, know when to stop. And you definitely too do want to overlap some of these, right? So when it dries, I can totally go in the middle and put a much darker circle or much whiter circle, darker paint right on top of that one, right? To give that kind of bokeh effect, layering them is very pretty. And then softening my edge because I got too much paint there. So I just went to fix it and wiped it all over the place. So let's fix it again but with control, to control that one. Better. How are we doing? I'm sorry, I wasn't reading, I was working. Um, okay, so let's see. Now I, I need to read some of these things out. So let's see what we're getting. Question, Vicki, even though my fingers are dry, I always leave fingerprint marks when I play with Distress Oxide. Any tips? Distress oxide takes longer to dry. So what I would do is heat set it before you work, go in there because ink's not dry. That's why you're leaving fingertips. It also can be maybe the oil from your finger. So maybe lay a piece of um, printer paper, like scrap paper down as you're working, like have something that you lay on your work surface. So if you're pressing, you're not pressing your actual fingers that do have just natural oils in there and the other thing is i would heat set it before you start working on it okay um let's see oops jacqueline is asking i have i'm having a hard time to get lighter circles should i do other circles without reloading yes definitely it's too much paint right are you using acrylic jacqueline jacqueline so Ada is using bu bu <laughs> blue, yellow, and picket fence paint. I love it. Um, it's are you what are you working on? Are you working on art crayons? So just be prepared. You're gonna see something magical is gonna happen here later. This is not done. I'm gonna show you something I discovered, and it's gonna be so much fun. Uh, Sylvia is working with a makeup sponge. Awesome, and it's working great. I'm sure. Uh, you're using gelatos and master's touch white acrylic paint and getting a wonderful effect. I love that, Stephanie. Um, you're using a paint called fusion paint. I love it. I painted my fence with it. Um, uh, made to distress furniture. I painted, uh, stenciled my fence with it. So I totally know what you're using, Dina. I love it. Every time I pull up the stencil, you get excited for the big reveal. Uh, I love it. Um, it is a great group here, right? We do have a wonderful group. Hello, Jen Shirkus. This is wicked cool, Vicky. Thanks, Jen. Did you see I painted my nails? There's paint on them now because this is why Vicky never paints her nails. With your paint, like your whatever you and Kathy use. I totally bought it. Um, where's the information on this weekend's class? On VickyBooten.com? Uh... Vicki, have you come up with a substitute for the stencil brushes? I need new ones. I'm trying to get them put back into my collection. So I'm working on that, uh, but they wouldn't come out until, if we can make it happen till the fall. Um, doo -doo. I think, did I miss anything? Uh, so you're using rose gold glaze, very nice. Thanks, Dawn. You're painting yours now too. I love it. What, your fingernails? Dawn, Dawn, you probably have nice nails. I have like jack terrible nails. So, okay, I think I have answered the questions. I am making a card, my card maker friends. Aren't you quite impressed? Every time I make one, I'm quite impressed with myself. So let's put another nickel in in the nickelodeon all i want is loving you and music 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 anybody remember that song i remember it from um i loved that song because my dad used to listen to it but then it was on the muppet show and i loved that even more 
um, there, another little circle. And then let's layer a big one on top of it too. Like, I don't want too many, but um, let's do that here. It's harder on a smaller surface, right? Because you don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to start overlapping a few of these. I'm going to heat set it and I'm going to show you the next part and then I'll finish the card. But like I said, we're going to have a second round at this at the end of the month. So say you end up ordering the art crayons and you want to try the technique again, you'll have another chance at the end of the month. Because I'm going to do this on a layout. I just want it on a bigger surface for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay. Not very many more. Let's overlap one in here with more white. I'm very sad though, because I am not going to be able to watch Mr. Holtz tomorrow with his Sizzix release. So I'm going to message him later and say, Tim, I am not forsaking you. I'm teaching tomorrow, so I will miss whatever magic is going to be happening. I love Sizzix Day is like my favorite. I love my Sizzix. Okay, I think this is fun. I'm going to do one more circle in here, the little one really white. I'm going to heat set this and then I'm going to show you something magical. Why the art crayons make this magic. Okay. So you see these are all, oops, look what I did. So now I have to go in here and fix that because I put my wet painted finger on the edge there and made a little bit of a boo-boo. I'm going to see if I can't just fix it by darkening up that one corner or we will see if Vicky messed everything up. I ruined it all. We'll see. I don't think so, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to say it's going to be okay. I think it's enough circles, don't you think, friends? I think it's enough, right? You definitely can see the effect. And now I'm done. I'm done this part. I'm going to heat set it. Um, and then I will do that. I can schedule uh, Yes, no, tomorrow is totally for my peoples, right? I'm very excited. It's a Fernwood weekend. So the plus with um, all of those is I can go back and watch it, right? I'll be able to go back and watch it. But everybody has been putting their sneaky peekies out and I'm very excited. I'm just cleaning my um, foam off, right? Because it's acrylic paint. If you leave it, it's going to get crusty hard. So if I at least wet it, then I'll be able to reuse this little foamy. Okay, so let's clean up. Heat set, just so the paint is set and I can show you the magic finishing touch. I'm gonna wipe this off of my craft mat and my plastic because it's acrylic paint and it requires way less elbow grease if you do it while it's wet. If you wait for it to dry, your sheet of acrylic may be garbage. <laughs> so just clean it while it's wet. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I have no garbage pail here. So we'll just throw that. I have a garbage pail, but I can't reach it. It's across here. How are we doing, friends? Yes, we will do how the class will run tomorrow is we'll get there. We'll organize our bits. We'll go through the kit. We'll separate it for the layouts and for the um, album class. And then we're gonna do paper cutting for probably about three hours, right? About three hours of paper cutting. It's fun. I go at a good pace. And then we will organize all our bits. We will take a break. And then I will come back and we will start assembling the album. We don't glue, oops. That was me throwing my heat gun on the floor. We don't glue everything down. We just get it all ready. Okay. Hi, Libby. How are you? So I am going to, um, your, uh, hi, Vicki, my friend. I won't be live in class with you. Your sister-in-law arrives Sunday bringing her kit. 
and you're going to make things together on replay. I love it. Okay. I will miss seeing you live, but I love that your, your sister is coming to play. Um, I, your sister-in-law, am not baking this. I'm just trying to make sure my acrylic paint is not wet to the touch. So don't forget, acrylic is acrylic. So if you have big, thick layers of acrylic paint on here, if you heat set it, what will end up happening is it will start to bubble. So because this paint is so light, I can totally go in and just make sure it is not tacky to the touch. So that's really all it needed, okay? Yay! Okay, so now I wanna show you something once this cools down. What is magical with the art crayon? Make sure your fingers are clean and you have something to wipe your hand on because I'm gonna get really fancy and I'm just using my fingers for this. So I'm going to make sure there's no pigment on here. So my uh, God-given blending tools are clean and ready to go. Hi, Diana. How are you? So I am making sure they're also dry. Hi, Rich. Oh, my good. Why did you do that? No, why did you do that? Short. No. Sorry, my husband just got back from his haircut and he brush cut his head. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Go away now. Look at my look at my homeboy shorts. I'm going to the movies now. Okay, have fun. Oh my goodness. He cut all I guess you really know how I feel about it, right? Hi Deb, how are you? So my fingers are dry now that he just shocked me. Shocked the monkey. So make sure there's nothing on here. I'm going to take my dry finger and watch what happens. If I take my art crayon, I can transfer that color in and take those white circles and make them tinted circles. So it looks more like bokeh because bokeh, if it is um, happening in the wild, will have kind of a little bit of an effect where the pigment or the color is shining through. Like it would not be full on uh, white, right? Your paint has to be dry or you're going to be moving white paint around, right? So I'm gonna stay in the one color areas, the warms, and then I'll clean my finger to transfer it into the blues and greens. So this is the magical part. By pulling the pigment in, you end up softening these circles and you can't even tell they were painted. It becomes super magical, my friends. See how it totally starts to soften? So see how excited I am? Because I, my finger's completely dry. I cleaned it and then I was drying it on my jeans when my husband came in and totally distracted me with his very short hair and very shiny forehead, okay? So now my hand is dry. I took the yellow off and then I can come down into my blue and then rub that in. So remember when you, you guys ask, will uh, distress crayons work? Well, they will set. So you aren't going to transfer the color. So the one thing you could do maybe is draw a little bit of pigment, right? A little bit of color. Let's see, let's try it with our crayon. I'm gonna go in with this really light blue. So let's see if I put a little down and rub my finger into that. I don't want it to be too dark, but I could probably then come in and tint them a little bit. Okay. Now it will put way more color on. So I really like kind of the softness of clean it up, but let's try it again with a little bit of green, maybe here, a little bit of green, clean finger with my naturally occurring blending tools and you could come in maybe okay just gotta watch because you only want a really light hint because if you put too much pigment on it just takes all of the kind of magic away so for the rest i'm just going to pull from what is existing and just blend it in because i like it better i'm not going to pull pigment from the art crayons in i'm going to do it from the sheet and just kind of soften my edges. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, 
going to clean my finger and then work in this section now. Yeah, never let them go off on their own. And we talked about that. I'm like, Rich, don't go that short with your hair, especially in the freaking winter time, dude. The poor guy. I probably just crushed him. <laughs> crushed his little his little man heart. But I'm like, why'd you do that? Ding dong. Poor guy. I'll go up and tell him it looks awesome. <laughs> okay, so softening. You can leave some of them a little brighter though, right? The ones on top. Oh, I love this. Okay. So look at, I hope you guys can get that effect. I hope you can see it because I'm never sure how um, good the light in the camera is, but totally love that effect. So that is the bokeh effect. The card base is done. And now you guys are going to be super impressed because I'm going to finish it. I'm going to make a card right now. I'll finish it, right? Um, the, this, uh, the, I love this effect. So lovely. Thank you, Darcy. I love this too. And I'm totally going to make this on a full layout. I could see this on an album cover. Like the possibilities are endless. I love it. See, that's where I added the blue. It makes it too shiny makes it too shiny. I think it's better to just transfer pigment, excuse me, pigment here. Okay. So let's, let's talk about something. Would this work as easily on regular cardstock? It will not. Remember the um, foundations paper is just magical. It's just, there's something magical about it. And paper will have most of it, at least on one size, like a sizing so they put something on it when they're pressing the pulp that almost works like a releasing agent on top of it. So one side of foundations paper is a little shinier smooth. So I find that's why these mediums blended so beautifully and why I buy my, um, my um, foundations paper by the case. I love this stuff. I just ordered, I think, 92 pads to put in the store because I love it, love it, love it. And with the gel plate class coming up, I wanted to have it in there. But yeah, super, super soft. Love it. But that is why if you're looking and yours might not have blended like mine did, it could be the paper. Okay. So let's make the card, Karen. Are you impressed? Look at what I did already. I prepped because I don't know if I might add something on it. I might not. It might be super simple, but I thought the daisy could be really pretty on there. Look, super simple or just a title. And I went in already and I die cut four enjoys out of cardstock that I'm going to right now glue together because I am a card maker now and I know the tricks, <laughs> right? So I'm going to totally do this question. What type of paper did you use for your mask? Um, I think mine was too thin. Just regular 110 cardstock. Just the cardstock I have on hand. Some is this one's foundation, and this is 110 cardstock. So you can even see the label still on it. So super thin, but not as thin as, say, printer paper. And this one is much thicker. It's foundations paper. Because really, I can totally just keep using these. Like, I will probably, these will be my masks for the whole month. Let's, I'll make that a challenge, right? 110 smooth. Um, Marianne, are you asking me how the uh, art crayons will work on that? Uh, try it, but I don't know if it has the same um, characteristics as foundations paper. Definitely, if you have it, that's, I'd use it. But I'm just saying, if your stuff didn't blend as smoothly, it could be because of the paper. Like I mentioned above, cut your circles from acetate. That's a great idea as well, Karen is saying, because then um, they will be permanent stencils. Yeah, you can do that as well. Um, okay, so, oh, and the die I use is a Honeybee Stamps. I love them. Great company, wonderful people. So I used a Honeybee um, die for my enjoy. And now I'm going to get my connect glue because I love it because I love Gina K. And I am going to glue these together. 
to create a layered, oops, don't press that. I pressed way too hard, but we'll just move that around. I was so excited for my, um, that I had stuff prepped and that we can actually finish and make a card tonight that I just also made a complete mess. Don't do what Vicky did. Don't press, you don't need very much glue. And I'm going to layer these together. Okay. I cut four. You can cut as many, I'm sure, as you like, however thick you want it. I like that this glue is forgiving. And I can move that around before it totally sets up on me. Okay. And this is just going to give it that look of chipboard. I just like that I don't have to put any foam dots. Now you could cut this out of craft foam and then just put one layer on top of it. But I'm using what I had and that was lots of cardstock. Okay. But I love that font. Isn't it pretty? Again, honeybee. Honeybee stamps. Because they're buzzworthy stamps and dies, don't you know? My friend Melissa. Love her. Okay. Let's go again. So I'm going to go in with four. Because that's what I like, right? So this is the other thing that actually I need my friend. second I'm having a brain fart uh, because I am tired that's the other thing that's why I got to finish this up and get to bed so that I am bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for I love her dyes yes I'm going to uh, order a whole bunch more so you knew that Dawn as my fairy godmother of card making Dawn has been leading me um, and Karen I find certainly helping me with the card making that um, I do. I love the font. And I had ordered these. I had them. <laughs> I bought a whole bunch of stuff. And then I was going through. But I have very, very, very few um, dies. Um, I need more dies. And that's why Libby had reached out to me and said, let me know what you want from Hero. And I'm totally going to take her up on that. She sent me a whole list. Because now I'm a card maker. That's the one thing. If you said, Vicki, as a new card maker, what are the things that you really love? And I would say, um, I prefer die cut sentiments to stamped ones. And I'm sure it's all preference, but I just love them on my kind of mixed media style. I think that um, die cut dies are my jam. Like that is my thing, right? So um, I want to order more. More. Yeah, I love these ones. Melissa does a nice job. Now that I'm part of the card making community, don't you know, with all of my amazing stampers and manufacturers of this amazing stuff. I am very much loving these. So let me clean it up. So this is with three, layered with three. Let me show you guys. Put a huge Ranger order in today too. Because <laughs> we need all the things because I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of stuff. What circle punch do you use? I love the We Are Memory Keeper ones because they go in nice and deep. So I have a whole set of um, three. They come in three packs. I ordered these ones for the store. I have circles, stars, I think, flowers. I don't know if they have stars. I'm going to actually have to reach out to We Are and say, you need to do a set. I'm very excited because scrapbook.com has a bunch of new layering dies coming out. I can't wait to see what they are. It is the one other thing that I invest in and buy multiples from multiple manufacturers are um, the layering dies. And I also like, um, I have multiples of circle dies, scallop circles. 
So let's see what this looks like. Cleaning it up. Rich is still down here. I can hear him. He's probably over there crying because I wasn't very nice about his haircut. Yes, I love the card making too. And then now I will have to be a proper card maker and actually send people my cards, right? Does anybody make cards and never sends them to anybody? I want to know, are there other people out there that would make cards and just never actually ever send them anywhere? I'm going to love that so much. I did not do a very good job of gluing that Y. But I'll put the other one on top and see if I can't fix that up. I'm going to put one more just because. Uh, you do that, right? Uh, Michelle, make cards and never send them. I for sure keep one for myself and then I send the others out. I love that. I think I would like to do that too. Make one for myself and then send another one. I love making but hate sending. I donate them instead. That's very nice, uh, Kristen. Sorry, the uh, comments go really, really um, fast. So sometimes I'm reading it and then I lose what I was reading. You love die cut sentiments. Me too, Terry. Um, when I get into making some dies for the stuff that I do like exclusively just through vickybooten.com, I'm totally going to do some in my handwriting. I would like card sentiments in my handwriting when, um, we do my stencils and stuff. I'm going to start doing a couple of mixed media stamps as well. I don't want to do what's kind of out there. I want to um, just do ones that kind of work for what we do, right? If you like what we craft here, I would like some stamps and stencils that will go with our gel plate making. And as I start um, convincing you guys to do a little bit more of the artful techniques in the mixed media, I think it would be fun to have some dyes some stencils and some stamps that will work with the kind of art we make here, right? You make layouts and never add photos. Well, I am incredibly guilty of that and also totally okay with it. I like the process of making. So you know what? If it happens, don't be down on yourself. You know what? I don't think you're alone. I think a lot of people do. And now that my kids are getting older, I don't have really kids to scrapbook anymore, right? And with COVID, I don't actually ever leave the house. So we are going on a vacation. We did book that because I said to my husband, I really have been working so hard this year. Well, last two years, I would say, right? With lots of online classes. And I said, I need one to go and take some pictures to scrapbook. And two, I um, need to get out of the house. So we booked a trip. We're going to the Dominican, which I've never been to the Dominican before. Have you guys, anybody been to the Dominican? We're staying at like Secrets, I think is the resort. I think it's for honeymooners. <laughs> so it's going to be the Bootens cousin uh, ruckus with all those people just trying to have fun on their honeymoon. And then it will be the Bootens the bootens at the swim up bar <laughs> i make mini albums and most of them are photoless but i love them so much uh angie and i'm totally right there with you i don't even care if there's photos in them i just like the process of making and i love the idea of looking at it why there doesn't have to be there's no rule right but i love that the possibility is there i can add them when i want them right try not to make a mess too because if you notice I need tweezers, but I don't have them right here handy. So I will just use my big sausage fingers to make the I or the top of my J. It's not an I. The little dot at the top of the J. I don't care if it's perfect, just as long as it's done. Hi, Mabel. How are you? You love swim up bars. That is what I'm going to be swimming up to the bar and saying, hey, can I have a Sammy Sosa? Hey, can I have a pina colada? And then I'm hoping because it's the Dominican that we'll be able to do some dancing and I can show all of my salsa moves. Do you think they will be impressed with my Zumba? <laughs> uh, it's going to be so much fun. 
I am just excited to leave the house, leave the country. It's going to be crazy. Hi, Patty. How are you? You find it very therapeutic. Me too, Ange. But you know what, Angie? I pretty much disagree with whatever you say anyway, because I love you. Um, Dorina has a 14, 14 6 by 8 albums that I have made with you in the last two years, and none have pictures in them yet. Mine either. Mine either, Dorina. So we are totally twinning. And I'm all right with that. Although I do love when um, one of my lovely friends just posted her Warm Wishes album with all her pictures in it because she decided that um, December and January are hard months for her. And she was going to take pictures every day. So she just took selfies and photos of flowers and things on her walks and made the most beautiful album. And so, you know what? Really, we don't have to go anywhere. It's, I guess I'm making an excuse. You really could take pictures just, right, in your, in your surroundings, right? You could take pictures just with what's happening around you. So this is going to go on a white card base because Don tells me usually to put it on a white card base. So I prepped a white card base. I'm going to pop this up. Enjoy is going to go on here. That is a die cut, right? I'm loving it already. And then let's decide, do we want to just put enjoy or do we like enjoy with a little daisy? I kind of dig that. Don't you guys? Look at that. Super simple. I love that. What is the opinion? Pina coladas with a rum floater. The best. It would be one of my first treats after the plan. I love it, Val. I'm right there with you. Uh, that's because I'm boring. You're not boring, Don. You make beautiful art. I love it. So you like the word only. I, I like the daisy, but I want to, well, I guess I'm going to listen to what you guys say and then I can do whatever I want anyway, right? Um, isn't that how it usually goes? But let's just decide where I would place this. But I, I know what you're saying because really, maybe I won't put anything on there. Because the background is so pretty, we don't really need it, right? So, but I did grab a stamp set because I could totally, and I might, stamp a little sentiment for with enjoy. So let's see. So I grabbed this set of stamps that I absolutely love from Ellie's studio. From my friend Megan Andrew. And she does these wonderful um, stamp building sets, title builders. So I thought that it would be fun for enjoy. And then what did I see? Something special. Enjoy something special or enjoy everything. I liked that too. But I think the scale's too big. So what do you think if I used enjoy something special? Um, that's what I thought would be fun. Enjoy something special. And then you could put this on a gift. What do you guys think? Now, I could put it just on a little label, like a tiny little label and put it on enjoy. Do you think that would be fun? So let's stick this down because I don't think I'm going to stamp it on the background. If we stamp it, I think I'm going to put it on a little tiny little strip of white cardstock. Let's try it. So let's at least glue this down and then we can decide. So let's see, Get this foam tape, cherry tape, it's not foam tape, this is foam. I'm gonna pop this cause it's what I do, right? So I'm going to pop this up. I lost my scissors. I just had them. I am a scrapbooker. So if I cannot find the scissors, I do have like 20 other ones. Oh, here they are.
but we will do this background again with some fern wood on a layout so I can still use the pretties, right? I'm just wiping that off because stand up because I can't put anything straight if I'm not standing over top of it your albums are full and done I'm very impressed with that Roxanne show off I love that right you can't wait for tomorrow me either Leander how are you my friend have you been here all this time or did you just pop in because I'm sure a lot of you who have done my classes before know you're in for a ride so you may be resting up and not joining in tonight, right? Two, because your surface or your work area needs to be ready. Could be another reason, right? Good enough. Okay, good enough. And now enjoy. Oh, it's so pretty. What do you think? And then I'll stamp the little strip I was talking about. We can decide if we want to add it but I am going to just put enjoy on here for now because I like it. Oh, stamping on vellum. That would be very pretty, Jennifer. Right? I need, because now I'm a card maker, I need to get some vellum. I don't think I have. I'm sure I, that's probably a bald face lie. I'm sure I have it. I just don't know where it is because being a creator for 12 million years i am sure i have pretty much everything i am wanting to buy the new sizzix um machine <laughs> that just came out even though i have other ones but i need to have all of the things so is anybody else crazy like that with the shopping okay i want to make sure put that on Tap it down, tap it tap. Oop, need tweezers. I don't know where they are. So I'm using sausage fingers. So just hope I don't make a huge mess with this. Wipe my fingers off. Eek. Very nice, right friends? What are we saying? Hi Jess, how are you? What were you wondering? The electronic one, yes. I'm the opposite. I use something <laughs> until the wheels fall off before I buy something new. Oh Don, you should teach me things. Do you, do you remember me saying that I have enough rainbow shirts for the whole month of February? That is 29 rainbow shirts and I probably have extra. So that pretty much I'm sure proves the point. Um, but right. Uh, pardon my ignorance. Never. A question is never ignorance, right? How do you know if you don't ask? Is foundations paper American crafts? Isn't it the same paper that SCT used during the last crop and crate? It is not. It is 110 pound. And it is through my line with American Crafts. There's lots of different uh, good white cardstock out. Mine just has a little bit more body for um, the mixed media stuff. Like I'm doing cards right now and it's 12 by 12, right? It's 12 by 12. It comes in a pad that looks like this. So that is the foundations paper but I think the Nina and everything is what 100 110 oh 140 yes sorry Julie look at me I'm just sharing all of the wrong information because I'm tired but yeah uh but rainbows are uh an exception so I'm good okay the wheels aren't gonna fall off my rainbow tops um okay so that is all set up and now the only thing we're trying to decide, do we think I should just leave it? Do we like this just like that? 
I will decide, okay? I will make a decision. Um, but right now, I love how the yellow is carried in from the corner. But if we did want to put a little word on there, we could. And I'll make a decision, but I'm not going to do it tonight. How about that? How about that? So I'm going to flip the camera. And I'm going to show you with better light what this looks like. Um, here we go. Flipping the camera. Hi. Um, so, yeah, I might put some bling on it or something, right? But for tonight, you know, like I said, when you're making live and in front of everybody, sometimes I have to step away to finish the things. Does that make sense? So instead of feeling the pressure to just do it right now, I feel like this gives you an idea of what we made tonight. And then I still can go and add things if I want to. But for right now, I'm quite happy with that. What your takeaway should be for tonight is if you didn't have the same things that I was using, still go over. If you haven't joined already on Facebook, the Vicki Booten Creative Community page and let me see what you made. I would love that. Natalie usually puts an album. Sometimes you guys put your stuff in, stuff in the album or you just go rogue and post it. Do whatever you need to do, but I'd love to see what you're making. Um, and then I'd like to talk about the stuff please let us know what you used. If you didn't use art crayons or if you did use art crayons with different cardstock or you didn't use paint, but you used ink, just let us know because I think that's super helpful. Like I said, it does match my sweater. I totally pour, color coordinated with my outfit tonight. What we will be doing, because this is a whole kind of art study, that this is how we're doing our Friday Night Lives moving forward, that I'm going to pick a technique every month, and we're going to do different applications and kind of level up and switch it up and change different mediums. So next week, I am going to do bokeh with art crayons and maybe distress ink or oxide, I don't know, but with gesso. And I'm going to use, you need finger daubers, like, or even a domed uh, blending tool, just a circle foam. You need circle foam, okay? So even if you cut it, some uh, craft foam out with, um, you could do that. Craft foam, cut craft foam out with uh, your uh, steel roll dies. Uh, you could totally do that. But next week, we are going to do something with gesso. And um, art crayons or distress, you would need something that's water soluble or water reactive, and it's going to be super fun. So that's what we're doing next week. That gives you a head up, head up, head, heads up, heads up, so that you can get your stuff. And then I need to um, see the questions. Yeah, because it is quarter to 10, and I have to teach for like 12 hours tomorrow, and then again on Sunday, because it is the Vicky Booten. Fernwood Lollapalooza weekend and make sure you go and check out um vickybooten.com I do have a shop on there and I added a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of Vicky stuff is on sale it's all in Canadian dollars um I will be adding for the kit the pre-order for um Sweet Rush which is my next collection which is kind of this if this is your color palette, what we did tonight, you will love that collection. Um, I will be adding that next week. Um, like I said, we're going to be finishing out the month of February with the um, Boca techniques. And, and I'm going to come up with something different, but I also want to come and revisit what we did tonight on the layout. I, and I'll just do it with you guys on a Friday night because I don't really have time to craft outside of that. So um, for sure, we're going to do this. Um, if you're joining me tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're well rested, have snacks ready. Um, be prepared to have fun. That is the biggest thing. Make sure you have a new trimmer blade because we do a lot of paper cutting. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you as always to Natalie for always being my tried and trusty sidekick and helping you guys with any questions that you had. Thank you, every single one of you who joins me every week for joining me for the first time tonight. There were lots of you. Um, I love this. I hope that it fills something creatively and community-wise um, for you guys like it does for me. It's certainly, I look forward to this all week. I am loving how um, I switched it up a little bit this year and having something that is kind of consistent for a month because 
one, I think it's a great learning opportunity to kind of see one technique and multiple applications of it. I think it makes the learning a lot better. Um, and using different mediums, I think is super helpful because you should have something at home that you can use, or at least you see the new things that I'm using, you see it in action, and then you can make kind of that educated decision as a consumer if you want it or not. So I love this. Um, sorry if I missed questions or anything. Say it right now while I'm looking, if I missed anything. If you have any questions for tomorrow, it's on YouTube. Make sure that you follow the link. All you really need is your cutting diagram. It doesn't even matter if you have that. I will hold your hand through all of it tomorrow, right? Um, your ideas and skills are inspiring. I cannot wait for Fernwood this weekend. Hello. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Question. I'm ready, Lou. Give it to me. What is your question? Uh, do you trim the papers tomorrow for layout Sunday? A little bit. Not all of them, but some of the papers we're using, we're using in both classes. So, but um, we will do paper cutting on Sunday as well. Okay, so a little bit of both. I can only be live on Sunday. It is, I think, well, read the instructions for uh, the layout class on Sunday and we'll get you caught up. Okay, we'll get you caught up. It's, don't stress, it'll be good. Um, is, there, is there a class charge? Yes, there is. This is how I make my living. So um, I do all of this every Friday for free, but uh, if you want access only and you already have the Fernwood collection, it's 40 Canadian, but it is 15 plus hours of Vicky time, right? Um, some of you were asking about Fernwood kits. I may have more. As I was cleaning up, I may have more. Um, I will also, I'll post about that next week when I can look at everything. Well, I will have more. I just don't know how many. There might be about 10 more kits. So if it's something like, say you join in this weekend, you're like, oh, I'm joining. I'm just going to use my stuff. You end up loving what we're making and you want a kit. Um, there may be more kits. So um, you will see. Uh, it's it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, thank you, Pam. We'll do everything is posted in the guide section of the private Fernwood group. Uh, this will be your first class. Cannot wait till tomorrow. We're going to have so much uh, fun, Tammy. How do I sign up? VickiBooten.com. You will go in and you will see Fernwood access only. And that is how you will get, um, there is a Facebook group number that you can cut and paste or search on Facebook. Vicky, or I think it's Vicky B. Uh, Fernwood. If you search that, you'll find the group, but there is a link for it as well. Okay. And then all you need to do is get access to that is to go and ask to join the group and you need to provide your order number, which is what you get when you pay for the class. And then everything is in there. And all you really need in there is the link for the Facebook um, or YouTube class tomorrow. Okay. Um, yay. All right, friends. So I am going now. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. I will see you next Friday for our next installment of the Boca Technique. And yes, you can watch it later. It's all recorded, even though I'm live all weekend. Um, it's all recorded. Will there uh, be a doodling class this year? Yes. I just, uh, one Vicky, right? Um, I've still been actively, like literally for the last two months doing back-to-back -back collections. So uh I don't have much steam left. So there will be, there is going to be a drawing class. There's going to be a gel plate class this year. At some point, there will be a sweet rush class. There is going to be two other Lollapalooza weekends this year, two other, I can't tell you what they are because you can't know about them yet, but there'll be lots of stuff. There'll be something for everybody. So have a good night. Thank you for joining me. For some of you, I'll see you tomorrow. For the rest, hope to see you next Friday. Have a wonderful weekend and make sure you get some creative time for yourself. And we'll see you guys later. Uh, photo class, I'll try, Teresa. I'll do all the things. Everything I can fit in, I'll try to get done. But yes, I would like to do part two of the photo class. So we will see you later. Have a great night, friends. And I'm saying goodbye before there's any more questions because I have to go to bed. I have a long day tomorrow. So we'll see you later. Bye, guys. And, and.